Hello and what's up guys, welcome to the next video in which we're going to see how to make an brute force attack on our servers. So basically this is for educational purposes only. You shouldn't actually use this on public servers that are not yours and you don't have enough permissions for. So if you want to learn more, stick with me. So if you are here, you might already know what brute force attack is and how exactly it works. So I've got the timestamps down below and if you want to skip this part where I'm going to explain a little about it, you can actually go ahead and move forward. So a brute force attack is when we don't know the credentials for a target which in this case is a server or it can be any other resource like for example a account on a website or any other usernames and passwords or simply just a password for a card for example or any other stuff which in this case will be the username and password for our SSH server. So basically in a brute force attack you keep guessing the username and password and after a number of trials you might actually guess the correct username and password. So basically in this kind of attack it is not for granted that you can actually guess the correct username and password. That is because you have a password list which is actually a list of common passwords that have been used by users and actually the possibility of the password being in that commonly used password list is so high that it is worth trying the passwords so maybe as a result you can actually crack the password. So right now that you have a total overview of how a brute force attack will look and as I I said in our case the target will be one of my own SSH servers and we're going to actually give a password list to a script file which will actually utilize a command line automation tool which is called Clive and you can do a vast variety of automation tasks with it which actually can save you a lot of time. So if you want to learn about the Clive and how to install it and actually make use of it, I've got a video for which you can find the link down in the description section so you can actually give a visit. So going back to the topic, by utilizing this tool, the script file will actually go ahead and try the passwords on my SSH server and because I have put the correct password also in the password list, we'll actually see what happens when the script file finds the correct password. So without any further ado, let's get down to work. So as you can see over here on the SSH brute force directory on my GitHub repository where I put all the files and configurations and any other stuff that I create on my videos and for which you can also find the link down in the description section. So no worries about the codes and configurations, let's just move into the work. So over here I've got a password list which actually has some random passwords in it. So basically in a real world example you will actually give a password list that contains a lot more passwords than I have over here and normally the list will actually contain the passwords that are commonly used among all the users. So like for example we have a lot of password lists in github repositories and one of the most commonly used is the rockyou.txt which actually contains more than 14 million unique passwords in it and it is totally free and you can actually download it by a simple search on Google. So moving back to the VS Code over here, I've got the attack.sh file over here in which I have defined the username and the host of the SSH server. So basically the username will be the same trying with a lot of passwords. So the password file path is given right over here and if your file actually exists in other places and not right next to the attack.sh file you should actually change this value accordingly. So right over here I've got the main logic of my brute force attack. So actually by a if statement I'm checking for the existence of the password file and if it doesn't actually exist it'll go ahead and throw an error and exit out of the execution. So actually if the password file exists we'll have a loop that loops through each line in the password file 
and actually it will break from the loop if the haunted.txt file exists so basically whenever it can make a successful connection to the SSH server it will actually lock the password in the haunted.txt file and this if statement will ensure that if the haunted.txt file exists it will actually exit the execution and will not actually try the whole list of the passwords so as i said i'm going to use clive which is a cli automation tool and it actually requires a clive.yaml file in order to execute the tasks that we define in it so basically i've got a clive-sample.yaml file over here and it will look something like this again if you want to learn more about the clive tool i just recommend you watch my clive video that i'll link in the description section so right over here we've got some global settings and over here we've got the actions that are actually the commands that we normally do when we want to ssh to a server so over here by typing in ssh the user name variable and the host variable and by passing the key enter it'll actually enter the typed command and by putting this over here i just wanted to put a gap between the ssh command and typing in the password because it actually makes a network call and has a little delay so basically if your network connection is not stable or it is slow you can actually increase the count number over here so the delay between the last enter and putting in the password will be increased and actually you can get this working so it types the password in the cli and actually it hits enter and right over here it checks if the execution of the last command which is actually the ssh command itself has been successful it just goes ahead and logs the username password and host in the haunted.txt file which is exactly the same file that will break the loop execution and actually will prevent checking the rest of the passwords on the same host so the point here is that right before you start the attack just make sure you remove the haunted.txt file or else the execution of the loop will exit in the first run and actually you won't be able to check all the passwords in your given password file so actually this is the sample clive.yaml file and if i go back to the attack.sh file over here in here i have tried to create the clive.yaml file which is the default file that clive will look for its configuration and actually by using the set command i just replaced the dollar host dollar username and dollar password with the real values that i have in the execution of this script file so right now that my clive.yaml file is ready i can actually run the clive start command so it will actually go ahead and execute the tasks that i have defined in the clive.yaml file and actually check if it can make a successful connection to the ssh server with the given username and password so in order to demonstrate this actually on the global settings over here i am going to comment out the headless and skip pause before quit options over here and i'll hit save so i can actually demonstrate how the whole process executes in action so if i move to the terminal i'll hit ls and make sure i am in the exact same directory that i've got all my files and simply if i say bash attack.sh you can see that it actually creates a window and tries to execute as we defined in the clive.yaml file so actually as you can see it tries to ssh to the given host with the given username and puts in the password and as a result it gets a permission denied so basically the result of the if statement over here will be false and it won't actually create the haunted.txt file so right now the execution is paused and actually is waiting for me to hit a enter on the terminal that i executed the file and that is actually because i have commented out this line over here so the headless option over here is the exact same window that is created for each execution and by passing true we'll see that the window will not be created and it'll automatically check for each password on the passwords file so i'll move to the terminal i'll hit enter and i can see that it is actually trying the next password 
So I'll hit enter again over here. And right now, because it is the correct password, we'll actually see how it is behaving. So if I go back to the terminal and hit enter again, you can see that it logs the password found on the output. So if I go to the passwords file, because my correct password is on the third line, I got three executions. And actually, if it wasn't the correct password, the script would have just tried all the passwords in this given file over here. So right now over here, we can see that the haunted.txt file is being created. And actually the script file has successfully logged the correct username and password in this file. So in order to see how this will look in a real world example, I'm just going to remove the haunted.txt file. And on the clive-sample file, I'm just going to uncomment these two lines and I'll hit save, go back to the terminal and I'll hit bash attack.sh again. And right now I'll just wait for the execution until it actually finds the correct password. So as you can see, it is automatically trying all the passwords. And if it is not correct, it just moves to the next password. So right now, because it finds the password, it just stops the execution. And again, if I nano the haunted.txt file, again, it has successfully log the correct username and password to this file. So that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new in this one. Again, this is just for the educational purposes and you shouldn't actually try this on real servers that you don't have explicit permissions. So as always, if you have any questions, any recommendations, you can always go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below. And on the upcoming videos, I'll try to show you guys how to implement a defense system against these kind of attacks on your SSH servers. So stay tuned. And if you found the content useful, don't forget to give a like and subscribe to my channel, which will greatly motivate me to create more free contents like this. Lastly, don't forget to give a visit to my channel where you can find videos about other cool technologies. And with that, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos.